A very warm welcome to Money Nine's Daily Market Dose, Corporate Central, where we get you the everyday pulse of the corporate world, right from all the big corporate headlines to tracking all the market fluctuations. We get you all the major highlights of the day. First up, let's take a look at today's corporate world updates. Go First, which is facing financial difficulties, has received some relief as the NCLT has approved the petition to begin the company's insolvency resolution process. Abhilash Lal has been appointed as the interim resolution professional. This move by the NCLT has brought considerable relief to the company. The bench has also given the company legal protection and has ordered the suspended board of directors to assist the interim resolution professional during the debt resolution process. To prevent the company from collapsing, the court has directed the company to remain operational and financial obligations be met without laying off the any employees. With this, GoFirst will get 330 days for completion of CIRP, which is the maximum period, including any extension or litigation period. Meanwhile, lessers have sought deregistration of nine more aircraft of the crisis-hit airline. Tata Group and Indigo are reportedly in talks to take Airbus SE planes from GoFirst. In further headwinds for struggling, Spicejet lessers have approached aviation regulator DGCA for deregistration of three planes of the airline. Many aircraft of the budget carrier are grounded due to various reasons. The airline's three lessers, Wilmington Trust SP Services, Sabarmati Aviation Leasing and Falgu Aviation Leasing have sought deregistration of one aircraft each according to an update on the regulator's website. The latest development comes a day after the NCLT issued a notice to the carrier on a petition filed by a lesser seeking insolvency against it. As per SpiceJet's spokesperson, the airline is working to bring back grounded fleet bases, uh, the loan sanction under the emergency credit line guarantee scheme. SpiceJet has 67 aircraft comprising Boeing 737, B737 MAX and Bombardier Q400. Out of them, 37 were in operations. Last week, SpiceJet said that it has mobilized up to 400 crore rupees to revive 25 aircrafts in its fleet that are out of operation. And a six-member panel constituted by the Supreme Court in March in the Adani Hindenburg case has submitted the report in a sealed cover, according to a report in the Economic Times. The Apex Court is expected to take it up on May 12th and it is not yet clear whether the expert panel has sought any ex extension or submitted the final report. The top court had directed the capital market regulator SEBI to investigate any violations of securities law by the Adani Group. It also ordered a six-member committee to assess the extant regulatory framework. SEBI has sought a six-month extension for completing its probe. Meanwhile, three Adani Group companies, including Adani Green Energy, have lost their endorsement from the UN-backed group that helps companies establish concrete plans to reduce emissions consistent with the uh, Paris Agreement. India's market regulator has issued legal notices to government-owned PTC India and its financial services unit, PTC India Financial Services, demanding explanations for alleged corporate governance lapses. PTC India, a power trading company, and PTC India Financial Services, a finance company, have been given 21 days to reply to the show cause notice. Sources say that investigations by SEBI had founded a preliminary evidence of alleged violations of governance and listing norms. The SEBI investigation followed allegations levelled by three independent directors of PTC India Financial Services in January 2022. Following the company's response to the show cost notice, SEBI will pass a final order with possible consequences ranging from monetary penalties to a ban from capital markets. The Delhi High Court has upheld the ruling of an arbitration panel favoring Reliance Industries and its foreign partners in a dispute over gas migration from fields operated by state-owned oil and natural gas corporation limited. The oil ministry had approached the Delhi High Court after an international arbitration panel rejected its $1.55 billion fine on Reliance and its partners for selling gas that migrated from ONGC's fields in the East Coast Krishna Godavari Basin to their block in the same area. 
and amid ongoing funding woes in startups according to a report the world's most valuable edtech startup byju's is close to raising 1 billion dollars through a mix of equity and debt instruments byju's plans to raise 700 million dollars from equity and the remaining 300 million dollars through debt related instruments it is believed that this funding will be based on byju's current valuation of 22 billion dollars and this deal can be completed in the next one month For this funding the company is in talks with US asset management firms like Oak Tree Capital Management, Apollo Management and Davidson Kempner Capital Management. This funding will help Byju's get out of a potential debt crisis and the amount will be used to repay the 1.2 billion term uh, 1.2 billion dollar term loan B raised in 2021. Jayaprakash Associates the flagship company of crisis hit JP Group on May 9th said that it has defaulted on loans worth 3956 crore rupees which includes both principal and interest amounts in a regulatory filing on Tuesday Jayaprakash Associates informed that the company on April 30th had defaulted on repayments of a principal amount of 1642 crore rupees and an interest amount of 2314 crore rupees the total borrowing of the company including interest is 20 9277 crore rupees repayable by 2037 against which only 3956 crore rupees is overdue as on April 30th 2023 the company says that on completion of the process of the transfer of the proposed special purpose vehicle there will be a reduction in the total liability by 18106 crore rupees for which nclt approval is pending this is the second default by the company in the last one month Well that was all about corporates over to some stocks that were in action today and also find out the reason behind it First up on Wednesday May 10th Apollo Tires shares fell by more than 4% despite the company's results for the fourth quarter of FY23 being better than the market estimates due to two main reasons the first is that uh, the market was already expecting good results and that is the reason why the stock has been strong consistently for 5 days before the results in 5 days the stock has gained 10% and not only this the stock has increased by about 25% in 6 months and about 85% in 1 year The second reason is that that the profit of the company has increased almost four times year on year but this increase in profit has been seen due to reduction in a tax and interest expense in terms of results the company's profit in quarter 4 has increased 3.8 times from 113.4 crore rupees to 427.3 crore rupees its income has increased by only 12% from 5578 crore rupees to 6247 crore rupees And on the basis of good results in the fourth quarter of FY23 the share price of SCI a state owned company related to the shipping sector has been uh, has seen a jump of uh, about 9% on Wednesday the company's profit in quarter 4 has increased by 183.9% that is almost 3 times to 359.8 crore rupees which was 126.7 crore rupees in the same period last year During this the company's income grew by 7.2% year on year from 1355.1 crore rupees to 1452.2 crore rupees and if we talk about the whole financial year it has increased by 1.3% to 800.1 crore rupees in FY23 which was at 790.1 crore rupees in FY22 whereas the income has increased by 16.1% from 5086.3 crore rupees to 5906.7 crore rupees one of the reasons behind the rally in the stock is also related to disinvestment in april there was news that after several years of delay the government may invite financial bids for privatization of this company in may after getting all regulatory approvals in february this company demerged its non core business in march and at present the government has 63.75% stake in this company Wellspun India a company related to textile business commenced trading on Wednesday with a big fall of 5% during the day the stock touched a low of 88.95 rupees that is the stock fell by 7% in the intraday and the reason is the end of enthusiasm related to buyback After the announcement of buyback the share had also touched a 52 week high of 105 rupees on May 2nd 
The record date for this buyback was fixed on May 10th. Let's understand this in a little detail. May 9th was the last date for uh, any investor or trader to buy shares to become eligible to tender shares in buyback as per the T plus 1 settlement. This means that all the enthusiasm related to the buyback ended and now it will be important to see what is the acceptance ratio of this buyback that is how many tendered shares are ex accepted. For example, if the acceptance ratio is low then after the process completion, more shares will come in the open market due to which the selling of shares may increase. That's all on Corporate Central today. But before we go, a quick look at some important corporate events and major triggers which will have the potential to make market impacts. First up, over to global triggers. On the global front, on May 10th, US April CPI inflation data will be released. And on May 11th, results of Asian Paints, iSure. Siemens is to be released and also results of AB Capital, Deepak Nitride, Dr. Lal, GSPL, Balrampur, Chini, BSE will be out. And on May 11th, board meeting on ITI results to take place and the government will consider issuing equity shares. Also, six months anchor lock-in of Bikaji Foods and also Global Health six-month lock-in will end on May 11th. MSCI will announce index review for May 2023 on May 11th and also the weightage of two companies of the Adani Group may decrease. On May 11th will also be the last day of rights issue of Soam Distilleries with the issue price of rights issue being 140 rupees per share. And the last date of the IPO of Nexus Select Trust is May 11th. The IPO was almost 50% full on the second day. And uh, India March's uh, 20 rupees per share dividend X date falls on May 11th as well. While the X date of 1 is to 1 bonus issue of Sirka Paints is also on May 11th. Alright, that's all on today's Corporate Central episode, but we'll be back with more corporate updates tomorrow. Until then, stay tuned to Money Night.